Hey guys, uh, so this is going to be a video on uh, basically a walkthrough on how I built the 100% stainless steel uh, version 4 of my stove. Uh, this is it completely assembled and how I would take it out into the field. I just used a, uh, a nice uh, camp pillow stuff sack for it and it uh, keeps it together very nicely. So let's open it up and I'll show you what I've, uh, what I've got here. Okay, so that's the inside of the stove. Uh, this is what it looks like after, uh, I would say I've put about 20 loads of wood through it. So this is where I, uh, I keep, you know, my, my fire starter uh, matches, flints, and, uh, you know, cotton balls or something in there. And it stores away nicely, you know, it's not going to fall out. It doesn't rattle around too much. But let's open that up. So this is the lid that goes on there and push that down and that sits on there and pretty solid, nothing moving. Uh, the one thing I am missing actually, if I can find it somewhere, is the pot stand. Give me a second, I'll be right back with that. Okay, so uh, this is the pot stand that I, I constructed. Uh, this one is made out of aluminum. It's pretty light. Just put it together like that so it fits in the notches. I cut some notches in the bottom there so it'll attach securely to the hole and you know, it's not going to slide out of there. So it kind of locks into place. Uh, the first one that I made was entirely stainless steel. Worked fairly nicely. The only thing I found was that uh, you know you put the pot on and uh, you know this thing slides around and that was kind of annoying but also it wasn't quite thick enough that i can put some notches in and hold on to there because then it would be further down so i used uh you know pieces of aluminum and you can get that at uh, canadian tire if you're canadian uh home depot uh, they sell metal stock there you can buy that let's start by taking this stove apart and i'll try to show you the components of what went into it and uh, then I, I'll go on to show you how I constructed it, what the raw uh, parts I used to, to construct it, okay? So let's set that to the side for now. So this stove is essentially three pieces, okay? Um, you have an outside tin, larger diameter than the inside tin, obviously. You have the lid from the outside tin and the inside tin just goes right into that it's very solid I mean after a couple burns it does loosen up a little bit when things expand but when it's seated on there it creates a nice seal so uh, it works very well you can stand on this thing it's really really solid it's not gonna it's not gonna fall apart on you and like I mentioned uh, you know I've put about 20 loads through this thing and this is what it looks like uh, I've had it sitting out on my balcony through a couple of rainstorms as well. It's not going to rust. It's going to, I mean, you'll get a nice uh, patina on there, but uh, that's about it. You're not going to get any rust. This thing is going to last, you know, longer than you will. Okay. So that sits on the inside like that. All right. And then finally you have, this is the lid for the inside pot, okay? And uh, I simply screwed that onto, uh, this is an outer, I guess the inner tray for like one of those seagull, uh, what do you call them, billy pots. So it's the uh, the steam tray that comes with the seagull billy pot. I'll post a link to that in the description below in this video. Um, I could probably show you the pot in just a second. Actually, let me do that now. So this is the, uh, 12 inch uh, Seagull Billy Pot uh, that I used. This one's in pretty bad shape. I just happened to have this one lying around and I, you know, I was thinking of actually making a stove out of this. Uh, but then I, I found these parts and I realized I could use the inside dish. But uh, this dish comes from this pot and uh, basically, you know, it didn't have a hole in it. I cut that hole myself but it's a steam dish, okay? 
And I wouldn't recommend you go out and buy this pot just to get this dish because I'll, uh, excuse me, I'll put a, a link in the description of a couple places on Amazon where you can buy a pet food uh, dish. Stainless steel, uh, same gauge, really almost identical to this thing. And, uh, you know, you can get it for a couple bucks. Uh, you shouldn't have to spend more than 10 bucks on it. Uh, it is stainless steel, so you're going to pay a little bit more. Uh, you could also go to your dollar store, and I noticed that they do have, uh, you know, quite a bit of stainless steel stuff there. Uh, so certainly rummage through your dollar store first before you purchase anything on Amazon, because uh, you should have no problem finding something similar to this that will fit nicely uh, on your stove. And you have a really nice concentrator ring, uh, very solid, not going anywhere. It's not going to rust and uh, it's going to last you a lifetime, okay? So as I mentioned, this is 12 inches in diameter. Uh, fits nice and flush on this stove here. And uh, everything worked out really nicely. All right, so let's talk about what's, uh, what's gone into this stove in terms of uh, dimensions of holes, the air holes. And we'll start with uh, the outer tin, okay? So the outer tin, uh, when you're talking about a top, top lit updraft gas stove, they would refer to this as the outside air or the incoming air. And these incoming air holes are uh, half an inch in diameter and there are 16 of them. Now, I didn't do a very good job of, uh, you know, creating nice, straight holes and I will be making another tin but what I do recommend when you guys uh, build something like this is uh, get a really good like center punch hole and uh, let me show you one of those actually one second okay so that's a uh, that's what a center punch looks like it's just a uh, you know a tool to mark holes on on metal and it's a uh, it's got a very sharp tip there it's made out of uh, pretty strong steel and it's invaluable when you're working with something like uh, stainless steel okay uh, don't even attempt to put holes into a hard metal like stainless steel without making a small uh, hole to guide your drill bit um, ideally if you can start a tiny little hole in this metal with the center punch itself you're gonna have a really easy time uh, drilling through stainless steel uh, but if you don't and you just mark it with a pen, your drill bit's going to be walking all over the place and you're going to make messy holes like I did here. Uh, I did this before I had a center punch and I've learned my lesson. Uh, if you want to make straight holes uh, nice and neatly on hard metal like stainless steel, get a center punch. That's the, the right tool for the job, okay? So as I mentioned, there's 16 half an inch holes on the outside tin, Okay. Now, on the inner tin, uh, I keep calling these tins, but they're not tins, they're stainless steel. Uh, the inner can, uh, there are, where are there? There's 26 of these holes, and they're one eighth of an inch in diameter. Okay, so 26 of those all the way around, and pretty much as close to the bottom as you can get them. Um, and I put one extra one at the bottom. So, all together, including that bottom one, is 26 holes, okay? And the reason why I put that one in the bottom, when I went through my first couple of burn tests, uh, what I found was that the as we got to the bottom fuel level around here uh, and things started to peter out, uh, you want to have coals, like red hot coals, that'll give you uh, heat that's good enough for simmering, excuse me, or uh, you know hot enough to keep things warm. And uh, what I found was that the load of wood was kind of building up like a little hill because the center didn't really have very much airflow. Actually, it had no airflow at all. And if you can imagine, the air was flowing along the sides on the inside here. And that's where, you know, the material on the inside was burning down uh, this way. So if you put a hole or two or three or four in the center there, um, it's going to be a much more even burn. Uh, you're not going to be wasting fuel. And when it does, when the flame does die out, you're going to have uh, some nice red hot coals, which you will not have if you don't do that. You will have glowing red coals along the edge 
uh, but you know, in the middle will be uh, significantly colder, and uh, you know that really takes away from from the heat production after the initial flame is is done. Okay, so secondary, sorry, primary air, uh, that's twenty six one eighths of an inch in diameter. Okay, now on the inside here, hopefully you can see that. Uh, these holes here, that is called the secondary air. And again, I have 26 of those, and those are one quarter of an inch in diameter. Okay, uh, I can hold this down a little bit. Maybe you can get a better view. Okay, so 26 of those, one quarter of an inch. Okay, and uh, you want to make them as close to the top rim as you can so that you don't waste any space in terms of fuel load. So when you load this thing up with fuel, you wanna go, you know, give a little bit of space, but do not cover these holes or you're gonna have some problems. But you wanna go pretty much right up to the level of the, the hole there. Okay, so put it as high as you can up to that rim and 26 of those, one quarter of an inch in diameter. So I talked a little bit about, uh, you know, the configuration as you see it here and in my previous videos, you've seen how it burns. It burns very cleanly. There is absolutely no smoke when you put on a pot, um, which can be an issue uh, when you're, depending on where you are. So the elevation, how much air, uh, sorry, oxygen is in the air relative to where I am uh, may not be the same. So what I would suggest is start out uh, with what I have here. Okay, this is a good start point because I know this works really well. And then uh, mess around with your secondary air if you need to fine tune things, okay? So these here, start them off at one quarter of an inch. And then if you put your pot on, okay, so you have everything set up and you're starting to burn now and everything looks great, but then you go and you put your pot on the stove, okay? And you find that all of a sudden it starts producing smoke, whereas if you took the pot off, things were burning beautifully, okay? And that's a sign of uh, too much primary air, so the holes on the inside. Show you that. So again, that's the primary air. This is the secondary air, okay? So this is where the wood gas is gonna be coming out and it's gonna start traveling up and out through the secondary air. If you have too much primary air and not enough secondary air, and remember the secondary air is pulling in the smoke from the primary as well as the oxygen, the air that's coming from the outside. If that mixture is not correct, if it's too rich, uh, you're gonna have too much smoke, okay? So the thing to do to remedy that is to increase the size of your secondary air ever so slightly. So go up the very next step on a drill bit. The, the smallest next step that you can increase that, just go up, it'll make that much of a difference. So go ahead, start again from scratch, burn it, put your pot on, and uh, if you find that it's burning cleanly uh, throughout the entire burn, uh, when I say the entire burn, I'm gonna exclude the last 10 to 15 minutes of the burn, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But for the most part, for you know the full fuel level there, if it's burning nice and cleanly when you have the pot on, you have a good combination of primary air to secondary air, and things are burning very cleanly, okay? Uh, if you're burning this at night, you should see when you start off, uh, in this configuration that I have here, there is a lot of, uh, sorry, a lot of blue flame being produced by the stove. And blue flame, uh, as you should know, is a sign of complete combustion, okay? If you have really orange uh, flame, that's a much weaker flame. It's actually not as hot. It produces a lot more soot, and it's not the greatest for, uh, you know, a wood gas stove. Although you eventually will boil water with it, it's not ideal. Uh, so you should have some blue flame in there. Uh, you're not gonna have the whole flame being blue, but the base of the flame coming out of the secondary air 
should certainly be blue. If it's not, uh, you need to increase the size of the secondary air, okay? Uh, you should see some blue flame in there. Okay, uh, so let's talk about how I uh, secured the inner uh, pot top to the outside concentrator hole, uh, sorry, concentrator uh, cap, okay? So I just drilled uh, some small holes in there, uh, got in some uh, what I believe to be stainless steel screws or uh, I think they are stainless steel screws. Uh, and I just used the Dremel tool to uh, cut that and sand it nice and smooth. And, uh, you know, there you have it, nice and secure. Okay. Sits on there really nicely, doesn't fall off, won't move around when you're putting a, uh, a pot on there. And I think you probably saw from my first couple of videos, the sneak peek, uh, certainly the one where I was cooking with it, this thing was sliding around. Although if you don't do that, it's not going to fall off because you do have this part that's going to prevent it, but it certainly will move around a little bit and that gets annoying. Okay. So uh, it's in your best interest to do that. Really nice and sleek, solid looking, uh, not hard to do. This uh, concentrator hole, uh, let's just measure that. That's about, uh, that's two and a quarter inches. And actually, as I do that, I, I just realized that I told you that this is a 12 inch pot. Sorry guys, uh, I'm screwing up my, uh, my measurements here. This is a 12 centimeter pot, okay? So the distance in diameter from this point, the very outside edge to that outside edge is 12 centimeters, not 12 inches. Sorry about that, okay? Uh, this is the 12 centimeter uh, billy pot from Siegel. Again, don't buy it just for this part. If you want to buy it because you are going to use it eventually and you don't really care for the inside, by all means, go ahead and buy it. Uh, I think it's like 30 to 40 bucks uh, Canadian. Okay, I don't know what that is on Amazon. Okay, so let's start with the parts I used to build the stove. So I will post this uh, a link directly to uh, what I purchased on Amazon uh, to give me the components that I used to build this stove. But essentially, it's a four-piece stainless steel uh, jar set that you would use to put sugar or whatever, uh, and I'll show you what that is. And don't ask me how I uh, figure this out because I was just looking on Amazon uh, for stainless steel parts. Uh, something that I can use for my next gen stove and I just happened to buy a, a couple uh, different things that looked promising online. And what I was looking for, well, let me take this off first. That's While enough. I was searching online, I was really just looking for uh, parts that I thought based on the pictures could be used for a wood gas stove. And I happen to really score with this one. I bought a couple different sets of cookie jars or whatever you want to call these things um, that look promising. And this one, you know, just happened to be the cheapest one. And it also happened to work out best. Okay. And I'll show you why in a second. Okay. Okay, so we'll keep those to the side for a second. So the initial thing that you'll notice is uh, the set that you have to buy has to have the clear glass lid. This is not sealed on there in any way. It's just a press fit and there's a little ridge here that holds this glass in place. You know, just put one of these pots on top, stand on the thing and it'll pop off, okay? And so you pop that off. So again, let's put this next to the stove here for comparison. Actually, this is the, the bigger uh, tin, uh, but same principle. Uh, and then this piece here would fit very nicely inside, and it would be a, a very snug fit up until this ridge here. So it just happens to fit perfectly. This is 
you know, the lid from this thing is a perfect spacer, holds it in place nice and centered, uh, very securely. And uh, it just happened to work out very nicely, so I'm, I'm very happy for that. Uh, the entire four-piece set, I think, shipped to me in Canada, uh, and don't quote me on this, but I'll put it in the description once I confirm, was about 30 bucks. I think this was like 15 or 16 bucks uh, US uh, on Amazon dot com and uh with shipping included it, it came out to about 30 bucks or so canadian so when you buy this you're not just going to get the parts to build one stove you're going to get the parts to build two stoves because as you can see this entire construction uh requires two pots and i have four pots here and it just so happens again through sheer luck that this thing fits perfectly in there this one here nope that's the wrong one sorry guys fumbling around here okay so this one here is the uh, the smaller version which is what I used in this one and that also fits perfectly in there okay so you have two hundred percent completely stainless steel stoves that you can build with this uh, $30 cookie jar set or whatever it is and uh, buy that on Amazon so you should not have any issues finding this internationally and uh you know amazon.com is primarily american but they ship to us here in canada so i would imagine that you have no no issues ordering this internationally regardless of where you are um and so there you have it that's uh that's the secret sauce in uh, my version 4 100 stainless steel stove so the one thing that should be mentioned is that as you buy it here what you're going to have when you buy this set from Amazon is essentially this stove the way you see it here. Now, that's not bad, um, but obviously the ideal setup is to have some sort of a concentrated ring on there. And actually, that's a little misleading because you're going to have... Oops. You're going to have the lid as well, okay? Okay. And what I did with, with the very first version that I built uh, before I found this concentrator ring, I just cut out the bottom of a tuna can and used that piece of sheet metal and cut a, a, a center uh, hole just about the same size as that. And I press fit it in there. So you, have, you can have a, uh, you know, for next to nothing, you can essentially create the same concentrator hole that will increase the wind resistance of this stove and also its efficiency because you do have uh, the flame coming from the center. It uh, helps retain a lot of the heat in there and it allows it to burn a lot cleaner and hotter. Uh, so you can do that with a piece of tin that you would get from uh, like a tuna can or something, okay? And uh, that's what that would look like and you know you can make your same uh, pot stand make it wide enough that it could sit on there uh, the reason why I went to something else because this to me although it's functional I wanted it to look like I bought this thing I wanted it to look nice and sleek and sexy and I think I accomplished that with this that to me looks like a finished product. That to me looks like something that I would buy from Coleman or something. And, you know, the pride of building something like this that works so well, uh, so incredibly durable and inexpensive is, you know, it's very rewarding. So if you can find something for the top from the dollar store or uh, from some of the links that I provide to you on Amazon from those pet food uh, dishes, uh, by all means do that it does increase the efficiency and the overall look and aesthetics of the stove itself
So let's talk about this Billy Pot again, because I do think it deserves some discussion. Uh, so this is the 12 centimeter version. Uh, if you do, because this is a very durable, useful pot and a lot of backpackers, well, I wouldn't say backpackers because they're primarily going really ultra light. Uh, but a lot of uh, campers, certainly car campers like myself or bushcraft guys, uh, like to have these billy pots anyway so i would recommend if you're going to use it for cooking certainly buy the 12 centimeter billy pot from seagull and i'll post a link to it and that will give you a perfect sized cap for the smaller version of the stove and if you buy the 13 centimeter billy pot which i don't have here but i've uh, already taken some measurements based on what they provide online that should give you a perfectly sized uh, concentrator ring for the larger version. And I think uh, Seagull makes them all the way up to 15 centimeters, if I'm correct. Okay, so I do want to give a shout out to uh, Carl OS, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, from Ranger Stoves. Go look up his channel on YouTube. Uh, this guy, he's awesome. He, uh, I posted on a couple of message boards online and uh, this guy took an interest in, in some of my videos and he sent me, you know, from his own research that he spent countless hours uh, looking into wood gas stoves. The guy's built hundreds of different versions of wood gas stoves made from readily available tin cans and uh, one of his more popular designs, I believe, hope I'm saying this right, is the Mountain Ranger MK2. And that is a phenomenal stove, guys. Go look that up on YouTube. Uh, Carl, thanks so much for, you know, your input, sharing your knowledge and, uh, you know, guiding me on uh, really the intricacies of building a wood gas stove. It's really not easy. Uh, it's not just simply putting a bunch of holes in a couple tins and having something that burns cleanly. Guys, as you will probably find out when you start building this yourself, there is actually a lot of work and trial and error uh, that goes into uh, building something that has the proper ratio of outside air to primary air to secondary air that gives you a nice cleaning burn. Wrap this up, guys. Uh, you know, there, there it is. 100% uh, stainless steel uh, wood gas stove. This thing, uh, you can stand on it, <laughs> run it over with your car. It'll probably still work. Uh, I know I can stand on this thing and it doesn't crumple. Uh, I've left this out on my balcony, it doesn't rust. And uh, if you're going camping, uh, you know, you're not always going to have it nicely covered. You don't want something that's going to rust and you're going to have to keep building every you know, couple months. Uh, so certainly from that respect, this is a huge success for me. 100% stainless steel wood gas stove. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you guys go out and build these yourselves and please, by all means, try to improve on this design and share uh, in the comments section below with others, uh, you know, what you've learned, what you've not learned, uh, how this can be improved or uh, certainly let me know if you need some help. Uh, that's about it, guys. I'll, uh, I'll see you in my next video. And uh, the next video will probably be a walkthrough on my version 3. Okay, thanks a lot, guys.